I died and I went to hell. I was in a car wreck and we flipped 17 times on I-5. And during the flipping of the truck, my right hand was broken off of me. And by my hand being broken off, I was tossed out the back window of the truck into a pond on the other side of the freeway where I drowned. During, <clears throat> after I was already up underneath the water, the driver of the car would wake up, but she would have a busted nose, the, the truck was all smashed up, and her two-year-old son was right behind her in the back of the truck, who lay crying with his head busted. But when she looked over to see where I would be, all she saw was my right hand sitting there, and I was nowhere to be found. So when she jumped out of the truck and running around in the frantic looking for me, she just looked, she just looked and she screamed. She was like, oh my God, where's Tyrone? She was screaming, oh my God, oh my God. And all of a sudden, God is using this other guy to save me. He's using him to come from the Bay Area. And normally he takes Highway 101 to go to Oregon. God rerouted him up I-5. So he's now driving up I-5. We didn't flip from the southbound side to the northbound side. The accident is already over. So when he pulls up, he has to stop because it's in front of him. So he gets out the car and he runs up to the girl and he's asking, are you all right? Do you need help? She's like, oh my God, oh my God, where's Tyrone? She's just screaming. And uh, that's when the angel who came down appeared. As everybody's standing on the side of the freeway, a man walks up. So he's talking to Shivana and he, he's like, are you all right? And right where he is, the man walks up and points. He points to the pond. And he said, he's in there. Well, Arube, the Mason guy who God was using, said, well, you know, he said to himself, why didn't you go get him? You know where he is. You know, but it wasn't for the guy to move. It was for Arube. So Arube ran, hopped over the barbed wire fence, and before he dove into the pond, he looked. Like, where did he go in at? But it was still water. Like nothing had ever went in. So he didn't know where to look, where to dive in from, and you got a pond the length of a football field. Where do I look? So he just dives in anyway. And as he dives in, he first has to break through the mud, because the mud is all the way up to his knees before he actually breaks solid water. And when he goes down, he said he's down on the bottom of this pond and he's swimming, looking around in the dark. And all of a sudden, God led him and he touched me. When he touched me, he grabbed me and he pulled me up to the top of the water. And he said that's when people were stopping on the side of the freeway and were hopping the fence and they grabbed me, you know, to pull me to the side. I was, I was dead. He said, at this time, man, you were not breathing and blood was just coming out everywhere. He said, man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I was, you know, there's, I said, man, what are you sorry for? You did, you did. <laughs> man, you got me, dude. You did all you were supposed to do, but I was looking in his eyes to see what he saw. And to look in his eyes, he started crying because he had never seen no one dismantled like that. To where he had to dive in some water and go rescue someone that's dead. He didn't know whether I was dead or alive, but Nine times out of ten, you did. You up underneath pond water. You know, you had to drown. So when they got me and they started doing CPR on me, that's when I came back halfway. But <clears throat> I went back out because I had two liters of water and mud in my lungs. So I passed out again. And then the second time I was revived was by the helicopter. Now the helicopter had landed on, on the middle of the freeway. Stopped traffic on both sides and landed and picked me up and they flew me back to Sacramento to UC Davis Medical Center. And during the second time of them reviving me is when I went into the spiritual and my soul entered in. Just how I was thrown into the water, my physical body laid up under, my spirit left the body and came up out the water, but I was inside the earth. It was like the world had flipped and I came through on the other side when I popped out the water you know, the water would be waist deep. You know, it was dark. It was really dark. It was so dark that you close your eyes and put your hands over them. It was still darker than that. But yet there was some form of sight because I could see the silhouettes of the people that was in there. 
the screams that I heard, you know what I'm saying? Just the cries, people were screaming and crying and just yelling, you know, and I'm looking around to where am I, you know, and all of a sudden I had to move. When I got out of the water, I fell to my knees, boom. And when I fell to my knees, what was in me had came out of me. And it was like the death, because in the word it says death has to release itself when she dies. It comes out of you. Well, what killed me was the water, and it released itself from me. And as I got up, I noticed that my hand was gone. I noticed that my hand was gone. And it wasn't something that I paid attention to because down there, you don't, the, the cares of this world, on here I would be worried about my flesh. You know, it's my, oh, my hand is hurting, but there is no type of thoughts like that. I seen that it was gone, but kept going. and. When I looked up, I seen the people that were in the water that were coming out and moving and going towards. The people that were in front of me, like you guys are, see I'm standing here, are the ones that had died before me because they're in front of me. The people that are popping up out the water behind me are the ones that died after I did because you got the whole world. How big is the world? How many people dwell in the world? How many people die every second? where there's someone dying every second, you know what I'm saying? Because that's the way it, it, it goes. But when you die, where are you going? See, my heart and the things that I cared about took me straight to hell. So when I got there and, and seen, you know, this place that I was in, I had a change of heart. <laughs> this was a mistake. What am I doing here? And, you know, just having that, that feeling come over, this is a mistake, Lord, uh-uh. You made a mistake, I ain't supposed to be down here. You know, I, Lord, I, I was a good person. You know, and I could think all the stuff that I did, but that wasn't what saves you. What saves you is to confess and to believe in Jesus Christ. That's what makes you saved and to live according to what he has done. I was not living according to what he wrote. But yet I knew, you know what I'm saying? But yet my actions were different from what I knew. So my actions is the truth and what led me there. You know, and after I came out of this pit, I chose, I, it was a tunnel that everyone had to go to and I came out of this tunnel. And there was a hole in the earth, like 40 feet deep, I was down. But right in front of me was what the rich man, what separated the rich man on one side and Lazarus on the other side. It was a fixed chasm. It was a separation. It was a bottomless pit. I had to come across on the edge of the earth. I was walking on the edge of the earth trying to cross this pit because something, the will in me to live was still yet raging. And even though I had one hand, I knew it was a way for me to get out. I just had that faith. But as I came across that, the edge of the earth, I slipped and I fell. And I caught myself and I hung there. Meantime, they got my body in ICU with the breathing machine coming and breathing for me. Because I'm not in my body, but yet the door is open in case I come back. So the breathing machine is keeping it in a coma, you know what I'm saying, in case I come back. So while I'm standing there hanging over this pit, looking around and looking up and seeing where I want to be, seeing the top of the earth, the apartments, the balcony, seeing all of this and the place where I desired to be in my heart. I had no strength. I had no strength. And that's when it happened. And as I laid there, as I stood there over that, over that pit, it dropped on me, and when it hit me, I was light as a feather after that. The spirit hit me, and I pulled myself back up on that ledge, and I climbed up out of that hole with one hand and climbed up out, and the second that I touched onto the top of the earth, I shot back to my body, and I uh, pulled out of this coma. They got tubes in my body coming out, out the side, you know, where my lungs are. They're draining water and mud from the side of me right here. I'm pulling tubes out, everything, out of my mouth. I'm trying to get up because 
I'm running from this place, man, that I just seen. But then I had to pause because I'm back in my body and I'm sitting here looking and I'm seeing all these people around me and what am I doing here? I'm in this hospital and I'm laying there. Then I jumped because I seen somebody I just left. I just, what, what are you doing here? My mother, she was the last person I saw when I left Weed, California. But the first person I recognized when I woke up, she was standing in the corner and it scared me. It scared me. You know what I'm saying? This experience scared me. You know, it was like, who the first person a child sees when they come into this world? All right, it's a mother. You know, that was the last person I would to see when I left. But the first person I would see when God gave me my life back. You know, and that, that man, it scared me. And then I came to find out that five days had left out of my life. I was not here for five days, but it seemed like seconds because I was only experiencing that for seconds. You know, just an experience. But that's where the word of God tells us that a day to God is a thousand years to me. So if I'm only out of this world for five days, how much time is that? Not much at all. So imagine eternity to God. Where's the rest of your arm? <clears throat> it's, I don't know. It's gone. They probably burned it up. That's what they do with, with stuff that they come off you that they don't have no use for. They burn it. No, because gangrene set into my arm. I was in dirty water, and there was an infection that was right here on the open wound. And they had to keep cutting my hand, keep cutting more and more off. Because when I woke up, initially, my hand was going up to there. That was what came out off in the accident. And then when I woke up, I had that much. When I first came to, I had half of a forearm. But then they told me, Mr. Williams, we're going to have to cut more off because uh, the gangrene is spreading towards your heart. And if we don't cut it off, you're going to die here. You know, and I was tired. I was like, man, y'all not cutting, cutting me no more. Uh -uh. My dad looked at me and said, son, if you don't let them take it off, you're going to die. You know what I'm saying? But just, you know, it was, it, was I'm, it had to come off. You know, and it was like God said right here. It was offensive. With that right hand offense, he cut it off. What was sit, what had came into the right side of my arm, came inside that, was a sickness. And it needed to be cut off. You know, and that the Lord did that, but he healed me. You know what I'm saying? How could I know that he can heal if I'd never been hurt before? If, I, if you've never lost your life, how could you know that he's the giver of life if he never gave it back? So you guys haven't had that type of experience yet, but you're looking at a person that has. So there is no excuse for you guys, because how close is Brother Tyrone to you guys? Nothing but a touch away. You guys know me, everybody know me. I didn't cut most of everybody's hair in here. So there is no excuse for you in life now because you learned at an early age that God is real, his word is true. There is a heaven and there is a hell. And what makes your destination sure is based upon what's in your heart. That's why he tells you to let let him and his father in. If you suck with us, I am with you. In this way, <clears throat> you tell us a little bit about that, that tunnel that the, you going through. And what would happen in that tunnel? The tunnel, <clears throat> it was, it, it came like in flashes, like a vroom. You know how you, all of a sudden, like you're, you're dreaming or you're watching TV. And they'll take you from one stage and you're going through it's a it was a long tunnel but short because you're traveling in the speed of light but yet it's slow movement but yet fast at the same time because you're able to see the people 
that was stuck, that was bound there, and there was only a small path that was leading out. And had I have been over on either side, I could have been snatched because they were calling out, but I had no power into me in which I could save them. But it was for me to keep going forth, so I had to keep going. You know, and as I came to the end of this tunnel and seen the daylight, that's when I, it was like, man, it was a breakthrough. For you to be inside the earth, man, eternal darkness forever, and all of a sudden God to give you a second chance, I don't care how much the people is getting paid on earth. There is, there is no amount that could cover that. 